Last summer, I embarked on a project to do a homemade weather station with several sensors using the Arduino platform. And it went pretty well, and I learned a lot, but now it's time to go up to revision 2. In this old version you see here, all the components were separate and I had to wire them all together, so I started out trying to find something that would incorporate all this onto one board and give me a bigger display. Now the fact that I'm doing this video at all is somewhat of a miracle. In the bottom right of this photo on the frame of my camcorder you see where the mount um, ripped out when my camera fell off the tripod yesterday when I went to do this video. And this was my camera yesterday afternoon, completely broken down into pieces so that I could try to repair it. And here's all the screws. So we're back up and running, let's hope for the best. Now I'll show you a picture first of the end project, the WeatherSense 9000. And then I'll go through some of the details on how I created it. As a lot of you know, I do these videos for myself so I can remember what I did and refer back to them for future projects. All right, so let's take a look at some of the details. In keeping with my requirement of trying to keep as much on one board as possible, I purchased this iBoard Pro. And it's basically an Arduino Mega clone with the Atmel chip here also has a real-time clock on board with a battery. The input voltage is 7 to 20 volts. Has Ethernet built on, which is nice. It's got an SD card slot, an XB, which I'm not using, some headers, and then this uh, RF24 module with an external antenna that I installed on here. Now I put a little spacer in here and glued it in with some hot glue to give it some support and to keep that in line. And let's take a look at this on the back now. One thing that I had to do is because of this RF module, the IRQ2 line was not hooked up to it. So I had to put a bodge here on the back and tie it down to one of these pins to get it to work with the software. But that was, once I figured out I had to do it, it was pretty trivial. Now this is a Nexteon 4.3 inch display and I 3D printed a bezel for it. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is tie this in here with this connector. Now I only wanted one power plug coming in, so this display needs five volts regulated, and what was coming in for the board is probably around nine. So um, what I had to do is put a regulator on it and do some wiring, and I'll go into some detail here as to what I did. So I tapped into the incoming 9 volt DC power adapter, ran the positive and negative over to the other side to this board. Now, what is this board? Well, this is something I made and it's going to be difficult to show on here. So I'll draw a diagram and insert it here. But there's basically a switching power regulator for 5 volts in here, a capacitor and a diode, I believe. And then I just put a standoff in there and hot glued it down to hold it to the board. Now for those interested, here's what my circuit looks like to take the 9 volt DC input and put out a regulated 5 volt DC. You can use a 7805 voltage regulator or a 5 volt switching regulator or buck converter. I put a 10 mic uh, capacitor electrolytic on the input side and some type of diode to prevent reverse polarity on the output. Now on the left we have a 7805 voltage regulator and when I started using this to drop down to 5 volts from the 9 volts it was putting out a lot of heat um, and I was not really comfortable with it. It was hot to the touch where it would burn your finger. Now I, since then I picked up these heat sinks but I haven't actually tried them because um, well while I was designing the project I actually put a nut and bolt a bolt here and some nuts and things like that and it was putting off some heat that whole thing heated up but i did some research and i found these buck converters these uh switching regulators that are direct drop-ins for the 7805s you can look at the pin configuration and they really don't put off any heat at all so i switched over to them now the 7805s are 75 cents and these ones on the right these switching regulators are eight bucks a piece but I think I'm going to go with them from now on. So I brought the 9 volt input over 
and brought it into my circuit, dropped it down to five volts. The five volts comes back out and goes into this connector. Now this yellow and blue wires are the uh, data lines and they come over here to the serial too. And that's how the display hooks up to the iBoard. Put a piece of fish paper in here to protect it. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is gonna work. This iBoard that I have here and then the Nexteon display are going to connect up like so, making this nice little sandwich here. Now, what's going to keep them apart from each other? Well, one is going to go in each half. Now, here's the bottom of the case that I designed in Fusion 360 and printed on my 3D printer. And yeah, it's pretty thick, but I wanted to have the holes um, for the components and I wanted to fit everything in there and give it enough space so the eye board will go in here, little hole for the antenna. See, he fits in there nicely. I have a standoff down here for a screw, two standoffs on the right. And then the ethernet jack and the power jack will line up real nicely here. Okay. And by the way, uh, this is the header for programming. I may need to get in here and change some of the program. So um, I fashioned up this cable and what I'll be able to do is once it's together, I'll be able to plug it in through this slot and carefully plug it in. Now, I, you know, there's only four pins, but I made it so that it only goes in one way. So that'll be kind of nice. And I won't have to disassemble it every time if I need to make a programming change. Okay, then to display, um, I'm going to put in this bezel, which I designed also. It has a nice lip around here, so it gives a satisfying click when it goes together. It keeps it from, you know, the, the, the bezel in the bottom won't move around. Once it's in here, it's solid because of that little lip. It's a pretty nice fit, really. About a half of a millimeter all the way around. So I'll drop this display in here, put some small screws down in. And once that's in there, it'll just fit on top, and there'll be... A nice air gap in between the components and they won't hit together. So I'm going to get some screws and see how the holes were sized. Okay, these screws fit in really nicely. I got the holes sized correctly. I didn't even tap it. I just put them in and they went right in. Real nice. I was surprised too. These screws in the bezel were a beautiful fit. I didn't tap them. They, they just fit perfectly. Great sizing on that. Okay, so what we're going to try to do now, it's going to be a little difficult, but we're going to have to hold this up and plug it in here. Okay, maybe we'll try it standing up here. Yeah, this will work a little better. It's hard to stay out of the way of the camera. Oh, there we go. Snapped it in. Good. Okay, now this will uh, sandwich together here. Nice satisfying click with that lip around there. That's nice. There's a little flash here. I gotta trim that off with an exacto from the 3D print. Let me do that. Now, as I mentioned, I made this relief hole for programming the iBoard with this connector. But over here on the right, there's also a port that you have to program the display. And that's done with an SD card. So I got this little cable here that looks like a SD connector. And I'll be able to slide it in there, hopefully connect to the display. And then put my SD card programming on this extension, this connector up here in order to reprogram the display when needed. Now because I put this nice lip around here on these pieces to hold them together, I probably really don't need screws too much, but it'll help hold it together. So I got these and they're countersunk in there a little bit so they'll be a perfect length so that they won't pop out through the front of the bezel. And as I when I put the first one in here in the upper right, um, they just go in beautifully. So I got the screws sized really well. No tapping or anything needed on these. Okay, so what's this thing do? Well, it's a weather station. And if I plug in the ethernet and the power, it'll boot up. And the first thing that it does is go out onto the internet and see that if it can set the time. So there we go, setting clock, real time clock set. And it's 2.30. Now, this is one of the sensor nodes that sends the information from one of my locations. So 
I put the battery in and there's a little LED down here. And once after it blinks a few times, it'll send its information to the weather sense display. There it goes there. It says updating the basement. That's the node. And as soon as it gets the information and it ropes loops around again, we should see, there we go. Basement in the upper right, 72 degrees, 41% humidity, the battery voltage in the upper left and the last date and time that it was updated at the bottom. Now see, it says porch up here. That one hasn't called in yet. So it'll just keep rotating every 10 seconds between the porch and the garage and the basement sensor nodes. Now one of the things I wanted to do is be able to set the brightness. And since this is a touch screen, I put a little gear down in the corner here. that lets me switch to another panel. Now I go to this screen and the daytime brightness is at the top and the nighttime at the bottom. And I can adjust these and I have it hard coded in there right now so that 11 o'clock at night, it goes down to the nighttime brightness for the night, which is almost off. And then it comes on sometime in the morning to the daytime brightness during the day. So it won't generate as much heat you know, and it won't take as much power and it won't burn up the display because at night nobody's going to be looking at it anyway. And I can change the programming if need be. Now, the other thing I did is if you tap on the display, it goes to another screen. And there's a line here you probably can't see that goes across the bottom. But eventually what that'll do is take the barometric pressure and over time give me a graph. And that one only works for the porch display. So that's why that's the only one that has a barometric pressure. And here are a few shots of my 3D design in Fusion 360. The entire project put together with the components. Then the bezel removed, showing the screen and the eyeboard behind it. And this is how I got the spacings correct for the enclosure. And then there's just the board by itself. Now here it is in position, the old weather station on the left with the external LCD screen, which was real small, I couldn't see it. And I had it all glued together and had all those parts in there. And there the new one is. And here it is in position and in action. The porch settings. Switches to the garage. 3.2 volts on that battery in the upper left. And then the basement. Battery there is 3.03. .03. It'll blink red if it gets below 2.67 volts on any battery. I hope this has been informative and entertaining, and thanks for watching.